Science today is a religion. And I've always felt that religion should be a science. I think spirituality has begun to be scientifically looked at in certain universities and institutions around the world. So there is a little bit of beginnings of academic interest and scientific interest in spirituality. Well, I think it's about time, after about four or five thousand years, it's about time somebody started looking at the spiritual side of life scientifically. What a clever idea that is. Instead of all this other mumbo-jumbo, I mean, the scientists will tell you that um, when, if you want to talk about UFOs and, and aliens and flying saucers and that kind of thing, uh, science will tell you there's uh, nothing to it. It's all a bunch of baloney and uh, nothing to worry about. Just go on back and watch your basketball game and don't worry about it. But these are the people who are being paid salaries from universities who are getting their grants from the federal government. And so these people know what side their bread's buttered on. So they just, they'll tell you anything just to keep you sound asleep so you don't ask too many questions. So that's why I don't really have much uh, respect for scientists. I hold them, generally speaking, some scientists are profoundly wonderful, intelligent people who are doing great work. But that's about uh, four or five people out of the whole entire scientific community. And I'll tell you about those people in a few minutes. I want to finish my tirade on scientists. I have no respect for what we call today science. Science is a religion. It is uh, filled with deception. So you go to, go to university or college and get a science degree. That degree is what we call a work permit. It allows you to go out and get a permit to work. It allows you to uh, get your a government grant so that you can pay your bills. And so um, we've, we've seen so many times in the past, it's continual that if someone makes a discovery, a uh, very important discovery, but if it wasn't a scientist who was connected to a particular university, and it has to be a very well-established, well-known university, well, if that university and that particular, and the scientist working for it did not make the discovery, and if it was just someone who was a scientist on their own and made the discovery, then obviously it's not, it is of no importance to anybody because there is no university that can take the credit for the fine and no scientist working for a particular, a particular university can take credit for finding uh, the new development. And so, therefore, nobody is going to know anything about the newest find, the newest development in science, because science is nothing more than a business. It's a religion. They have their holy books. They have their holy prophets and their, their saints. And, um, and it's, it really is disgusting, because you know, the whole human race is scientifically arrested, it's like everything else. Our educational systems have arrested the intelligence of the people. And generally speaking, people know that the IQ level has been dropped down uh, so bad in America, especially. We can't even find our way out of a paper bag. Most people can't even read, and the, half, and the few that do read are all looking at the sports page. So... Again, I would say I have no respect for the scientific community at all because I already know who they are and what they're doing. They're doing the will of the one who pays them. Their, their salaries and their paychecks come from the universities. The universities get their grants from the government. And so you can figure that pretty much everything coming out of science today is a pile of baloney. It's what the government wants you to believe. And so... You know, the, the guy who pays you, I remember a long time ago, somebody said, when you look at a check, don't, it's not really important whose name is at the top of the check. Look at the bottom of the check. Whoever is signing the check is paying the guy at the top of the check. So check the bottom of the check. See who's paying for this. And so when you see that science today in America, and pretty much around the world, but especially in, in, in America, Science is financed by government. 
period. And, uh, and so anything that is in science today, astronomy, whatever the, the, the discipline would be, it must conform to the government's um, agenda, whatever the government wants you to know and wants you to believe, that's what science will then tell us. It doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean it's factual. It just means that none of us uh, know what the scientists are talking about, and they sound very impressive, and after all, they're supposed to be scientists, so they tell you uh, something, and we're supposed to believe it. Well, on the other hand, uh, as I said, I have no respect for science, period, because I know how fallacious this whole discipline called science really is. And so, um, but there are a few people out there who are excellent scientists, but you will not hear about them. You will not hear anything about their work because they're not connected to some prestigious university that gets a lot of money from the federal government. And so uh, their work will be pretty much not even seen and not even talked about. So... Uh, I, I like what Stanton Friedman said, my, my dear friend Stanton Friedman, the, uh, the uh, uh, scientist who I have a high respect for. He's one of the ones I was going to name, Stanton Friedman. He's up in Canada, I believe, uh, lives in, up in Canada. He's a physicist uh, and a nuclear physicist and a very bright nuclear physicist. And, but he's also interested in UFOs and other uh, related subjects. And he's quite an authority on everything he speaks about. But two things that Stanton Freeman said that uh, caught my ear, and I, I thought it was very clever. He said that, um, that scientists, when we talk about UFOs, uh, scientists will say, well, show me, show me something. And, you know, put it in my hand. You know, show me something I can actually look at. And uh, examine as if you know we know there's all kinds of stuff that science to, can look at with UFOs, but they're not interested. They're not about to look at it. But when scientists will say that, will show us something that we can put our hands on and examine instead of just stories. Stanton Freeman says, "Well, uh, you, you're telling us about something called black holes, and." So I said, well, can I see one? Oh, no, no, of course, they're black holes. So that means you can't see them. And I'd say, wow, that, that's, that's convenient. Black holes are out there, but you can't see them. And I think, you know, what, what kind of st nonsensical, silly crap is this? Well, you know, there are black holes out there, you know. And you say, well, uh, could you show me one? No, 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 we can't see them. Well, how do you know they're there? Oh, no, we know they're there because we can see black spots. So a uh, uh, black spot, obviously, is a black hole. So Stanton Freeman said, well, why don't you uh, bring back a piece of that black hole for me as a scientist so I can look at it and examine it, and then I'll see if you're right. But no, no, you tell us about black holes, and that's all there is to it. You said there were black holes out there, so that's it. And uh, nothing else to be said. Why? Because your university is getting money from the government. They're getting their funds, and uh, you're paying your rent, and and eating well, and driving a new car as your scientist, as your as a scientist. So therefore, we are to believe that there are such a thing as that black holes. I think science is a black hole. Period. 